job loss. Of All right, let's open up in a word of prayer real quick. Lord, thank you very much for your word. I ask you to please just uh, clear my mind and, and uh, give me the words that you have me to speak. And just let me convey this thought well and um, you know, give everyone clear minds to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. <clears throat> so, what I would like to cover today, what I'd like to preach today, um, it's kind of bouncing some ideas around in my mind, and I'm sure some of you preachers know that you start out with one, and as you study it, kind of moves this way and may come back and then splits off. And So, I'm... Uh, going to preach on how to learn how to learn uh, and we see that to learn we need to do three things first you got to receive instruction you have to learn right you have to receive something from someone else or something else and then two we actually have to do what we've learned if you just learn it and get some knowledge in your head you really haven't learned it yet, okay? Um, and that's why when, like, talking about learning Spanish, you can't just read the words and listen to people talking and then never open your mouth. Come that's on. where I have a problem. I don't yeah, okay. like opening my mouth. <laughs> and so that's been my difficulty with doing that is actually just doing it, right? You got to do it. And then really to finish off, your learning experience, you have to teach it as well. Okay. You can't just learn it, you can't just do it, but you have to strive to pass that information on to somebody else and you learn at each one of those stages. So let's start off with learning. How do we learn? How do we receive that instruction? Number one, you have to humble yourself. Proverbs uh, chapter 1, we see here, uh, verse 7, says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And really, to have that fear of the Lord, you do have to humble yourself. Proverbs uh, 15, I'll read it for you. Proverbs 15, verse 31, we see... A, a kind of a parallel to this. It says, The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. And then we see this phrase again, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Before you get any of that, before you get any of that wisdom, before you get any of that instruction, guess what? You gotta humble yourself. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, I'm I'm a my part-time job. I'm a firearm instructor, and so I see this kind of stuff all the time. Whether it's me learning how to teach, or watching students who don't want to learn, <laughs> right? They've they've paid me money to teach them. And yet, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know how to do this, I know how to do that. You know, it's like, just stop, right? <laughs> You're here to learn, be humble. It's okay if you don't know. Hey, there were times when I didn't know, sure. right? If you need to learn, to learn, you have to first humble yourself. That's good. Then number two, we find to learn, we have to find a source for that learning. Uh, Proverbs 19, verse 27. You can turn over to Proverbs. If you're still in Proverbs 1, stay there. We're going to be right back. Uh, Proverbs uh, 19, verse 27 says, Cease, my son, to hear the instruction. So cease to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. We should be avoiding bad sources. Right? We need to avoid those bad sources. So how do we avoid those bad sources? Well, Find a good source. Okay, First Timothy uh, chapter 3, 16 and 17, we see that the word of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness, right? That is a good source. We know we can start right here with the word of God and whatever source we may find that differs from this, we already know is off base, right? right? Doesn't mean that you can't 
learn from something like that, you can learn what's wrong for sure, <laughs> right? And there might be some uh, some things, you know, I'll read books about how to deal with people or how to be friendly and all this kind of stuff. And sometimes I re I'll read something and I'll go, mm, that sounds like a flatterer. Mm, that sounds like a liar. Uh, that sounds like, right? This is then correcting That's good. other instruction that I received. Yeah. But as long as I got this, <clears throat> I know that this is the ultimate source and I can, I can differentiate by, between what's good, what's bad, and, and be able to glean more from that. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 8, we see that uh, Solomon is telling his son to receive instruction from who? My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. Now, obviously, right? Hey, not everyone has a godly mother and father, and that information still has to be bounced off of this book to know whether it's good instruction or not. But I guarantee you, whether or not it's um, straight from the Bible or it's based on experiences, children, your mom and dad, they, for the most part, know what's going on, right? <laughs> and it, they are a good source to get instruction from. Um, and like I said, there are, there are other places out there where you can find instruction, but it all has to come back to the Bible and then the people that care about you and want to protect you, they're going to give you the best instruction that they know how. Um, just as an example, there's a guy, um, that I used to work with. He just quit. He's going to go get married, right? To this person who he's never met. Right? And I'm sure he's been sending this person money. And I haven't talked to him in about two weeks, but I'm pretty sure he got scammed out of a lot of money. And guess what? There were plenty of people at his work that cared about him, at least a little bit, <laughs> that told him, this looks like a scam. This looks like a, you know, he should have received that instruction. But he didn't do that first step, which was humble himself, find a good source. Right, and he just he went off, and I'm sure he's probably at a few thousand dollars, if not more. Who knows? So, find a source. Humble yourself first. Find a source, a good source, for instruction, and then you have to listen. Go over to Proverbs four. Now, um, there was a there's a little rhyme that my kids learned a few weeks ago. It was, uh, and I'm going to quote it here. It's not Bible, but it's good. Here we go. There was an old owl who lived in an oak. The more he saw, the less he spoke. The less he spoke, the more he heard. Why can't we be like that wise old bird? Right? Hey, and to get instruction, you have to listen. Proverbs 4, verse 1 says, Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. And where that son had to start there was, listen, right? Hear it. Hear me out. Listen to what I'm teaching you. You have to listen. <laughs> Number two, you have to watch. You have to observe, right? You actually have to see what's going on. So if you've got a teacher that cannot do what they're teaching you, might not be a good source, right? <laughs> so you gotta listen to what they're saying. You should see if they can practice uh, what they preach. Proverbs 23, um, let's see. I want you to go over to Mark chapter seven. We're gonna be there next. I'm gonna read Proverbs 23 and verse 26. My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways, is what Proverbs 23 verse 26 is. So. Solomon here is saying, hey, look, not only listen to what I'm teaching you, but watch me. Watch what I'm doing, right? Hey, you got to listen. You got to watch to learn. Uh, over in Mark 7, Mark 7, 15, the next thing is that you have to ask questions. You have to ask questions. 
Now, you don't have to ask questions in front of a whole bunch of other people. Maybe you take, take someone aside and ask a private question or something like that. Um, <clears throat> the phrase is, there's no dumb questions. The Bible says there are. <laughs> there are unlearned questions, right? Um, but, you know, if you, if you really don't understand, ask. So ask questions when you don't understand. And even ask questions if you do understand and you're just looking for confirmation. Um, Mark chapter 7, verse 15. There is nothing from without a man that, defile, that entering into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he had entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he saith unto them, Are ye so without understanding? Do ye not perceive? Right? He's, and then he goes on to, to learn him something, as it said in the South. Right? So, he, you know, they didn't understand what he had just said. He just said, Hey, look, something that enters into the man doesn't defile him. It's what comes out of him. And they didn't understand what had happened. And you'll see in other parts of Scripture where they don't understand something and they don't ask because they were afraid to ask. Now, maybe years later, after, you know, maybe after the resurrection, hey, they understood some things because they saw things happen. They, they didn't ask then, but now they understood. Well, here, they're like, we want to understand this, right? They listened to what he said, seeing what he did. They still don't quite understand it, so they ask questions. And that's perfectly acceptable to ask questions. It's, it's part of learning, all right? We have to ask questions. Now, that was just the gaining of information, right? We're, we're listening, we're doing it, or we're uh, listening, watching rather, and then we're asking questions to get that information. Next, you have to do it. You have to do it. Otherwise, you don't finish the learning process. You don't become, uh, whether it's language, you don't become fluent. You got some head knowledge, but you can't use it, right? Almost useless. <laughs> Except for maybe as a novelty, right? Hey, do you know how to speak Spanish? Uh, Donde esta el baño? And that's all you know? Maybe that'll help. That'll help in a Spanish-speaking country, but, you know, <laughs> maybe want to learn to communicate more than that. Uh, let's, uh, I'll read you Hebrews 5, 14. You got to do what you learn. Uh, 5, 13 says, For everyone that useth milk, is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use, right. yeah. using it, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So it wasn't just, hey, I'm taking in the milk of the word, and I'm just learning, and I'm learning, and I'm learning, and I don't do anything. It's taking that, learning, Right? Even my, even my youngest, right? She's still uh, nursing, but she does a lot of stuff. <laughs> she's putting to use what she's getting. She's putting to use those resources. And um, I don't know if she's filling up or, or starting the dishwasher yet, but there are definitely times where that dishwasher's closed and it's running. And it's like, who started the dishwasher on a, you know, on a, a, a thing full of clean dishes? I'm like, I think it might have been the baby. <laughs> right? She's watching. She's listening. She's doing it, right. right? And eventually she's going to learn when to do that, <laughs> but she's learning, right? So you got to do it. You got to do it to learn. Now, when we take that knowledge and we do it, do we do it perfectly? No. So then what do we have to do? We have to receive some correction. We've got to receive some reproof. Uh, Proverbs 12:1. Uh, I'll flip over there. Uh, I want you to turn over to Ezra chapter 7. That's where we're going to be next. I'm going to read Proverbs chapter uh, 12, verse 1, and then 13, verse 1. It has very similar uh, wording. 12, 1 says, Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. And reproof simply is, you know, if, if I wrote something down here, and I made an error, and someone came through and lined through it and wrote the correct answer, that was reproof, 
That's proofreading, right? Making it correct. There was no hard feelings. There was no animosity. There was no yelling or screaming. It was just, that's wrong. This is right. Okay? And that's what reproof is. It's just a simple instruction. That's wrong. Do it this way. Well, uh, chapter 13, verse 1 in Proverbs says, A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. Now, rebuke is stronger, but it can still be instruction. It just depends on how hard-headed you are, right? <laughs> if you're not hard-headed, if you're taking it, maybe you just get reproof. Well, if you're pushing back a little bit, I don't think that's right, then you do get rebuke. Um, as an instructor, there are people that I rebuke, especially ones that point guns at places, like at me, where they should not be pointed, right? <laughs> they don't get reproof at that point. They get rebuke. They yeah. get that way. <laughs> well, oh, sorry, you know. So, hey, whether we're getting reproof or we're getting rebuke, we have to take it as part of that learning process. And that is part of that staying humble, right? Because, hey, we humble ourselves, we listen, we learn, we start doing, everything's hunky-dory, reproof. And then that humble, that pride, right? But then we start getting away from being humble because well, I was doing everything I was supposed to. I'm, you know, we got to keep humble. We got to stay back down where we were. Humble, humility, and just receive the correction. <coughs> now, uh, you're in Ezra chapter 7. I'm going to move over to Ezra chapter 7. Like I started off with, we've got a learn one, we've got to do one, we've got to teach one, right? That's uh, when I worked at uh, Chick-fil-A, my first real job, that was what my boss said. He said, hey, you learn how to do something, you do it, and then you go teach someone how to do it. That way you know how to do it, <laughs> right? And if you've got to teach someone how to do something, especially if you want to teach them right, you're going to make sure you know what you're doing. Right? You're going to make sure you know exactly what needs to be done. And really, if, as, as an instructor, I've got to that point where I'm like, hey, I know what I'm doing. I've done it. And then I go to teach it. It's like, I need a lot more growing in this area. To convey this correctly, to teach this correctly. In uh, Ezra chapter 7, verse 10, we see... Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, he learned it, and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. Guess what? Ezra had the whole picture. Amen. He got it? Yep. He didn't just get it and then teach someone how to do it. He got it, he did it, and then he taught it. Right? And I guarantee you Ezra knew the word of God pretty well because he prepared himself to seek it, to do it, and then to instruct others on how to do that. You learn when you set out to teach. We, we can see that here because he was seeking it so that he could do it and he could teach it. Um, <clears throat> and even, say you get to the point where now you are teaching, right? You've learned, you're teaching. It does not mean that you're done learning. Right, we we see uh, in John chapter three, Nicodemus comes to Jesus, and he was one of those that didn't want to ask in front of everyone. He came to him at night, right, and he's asking him questions, and Jesus tells him, "Art thou not a master in Israel, and knowest not these things?" Right, he was one of the Pharisees. He sat in Moses' seat. He was telling people what to do, but hey, he was humble enough to know. I'm teaching. There's somebody here who looks like he's a good source. We know you're from God because no one can do these miracles except he were from God. He was connecting some dots. He came to ask Jesus questions. He came to learn, even though he was a teacher. Now, uh, to teach, you need to do three things, and we already covered them in learning. The three things were listen, watch, observe, and ask questions. Except as a teacher, you're going to 
teach, obviously, right? You're going to impart that knowledge, and then you are going to observe. You are going to see how your student is learning, okay? What they need help with. Acts chapter 17, we see Paul being brought up to Mars Hill, and what did he observe? That they were superstitious. And he already knew that walking up as he was watching their devotions, looking at their devotions, he observed that and he knew exactly what to give them and how to give it to them because he was observing what they needed, what they were doing. As a teacher, you need to observe that individual that you're teaching exactly what they need and how they need it. It's not cookie cutter. It's not just one size fits all. Some people need a little bit extra of uh, eternal security. (laughs) Some people need a little bit extra here. Some people need a little bit extra on works. Some people need a little bit extra on who Jesus is, right? If we're soul winning, right? It's not just, I've gone through my 10 verses, let's pray. You want to pray? No, you don't. Yes, you do, right? It's, you're a teacher, you're instructing, you need to observe where they are and give them exactly what they need. The second thing, is ask questions. Uh, I'm going to turn over to Mark chapter 8. I'm just going to read this short verse real quick. Mark chapter 8, verse 5 says this. Talking about Jesus. And he asked them, "Mm, I wrote down the wrong one, but it's still a question. Here we go. (laughs) How many loaves have ye? There was another better one. I, I don't know where I put it. But how many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven. Did Jesus already know how much bread they had? Why was he asking them, how much bread do you have? How many loaves do you have? How many fish do you have? To get the student to think about what's going on, and then he was going to show them how he was going to provide for them. The, The spot I was thinking of is Jesus asked them, who do men say that I am? Some say people say you're a prophet. Some people say you're Elias. Right? But whom do you say that I am? He's getting them to think. Why? So they would learn. Right? And said, Thou art the Christ. Right? He got them to think. He was asking them questions to bring out their thoughts. And we do the same thing in soul winning. And I do the same thing at the range. Like, why don't we want to point the gun in that direction? Well, because it would be dangerous. There you go, right? <laughs> but, you but you have to ask people. You have, if you're teaching someone, you've got to observe what they're doing, where they are. You have to ask them questions to get them to learn. And then lastly, you have to listen, right? I, that was part of the asking questions. You're asking questions so that you can listen to what they're saying. You can see if they've learned or not. We do that so when we get to the end. Let me just ask you a few questions so that I can make sure that I was clear. Right? That's what I always say. I put it back on me. Let me make sure I taught you right. Are you a sinner? Yes. What do you deserve for hell, uh, for being a sinner? And they say, well, I deserve to be forgiven. No. All right. Let's cover that again. What do you deserve? <laughs> you want forgiveness, but what do you deserve? Right? We ask them questions to see where they are, to see if we imparted that knowledge well, to see if they've actually learned. And sometimes you just ask them, are you giving me the right answer because you know what I'm asking for? Or do you not do you not care for it? Do you do you not believe what I'm saying? All that kind of stuff. Right. And that's part of the learning process, part of teaching. That's part of all that. Right? So you have to first you gotta learn what you're talking about. You gotta be humble, you gotta find a good source, then you've gotta listen, ask questions, do it, receive that correction. Right? And uh, you have to to finish off the learning process, you do have to teach. And Teaching is as easy as, like I said, watching where they are, what they need specifically, asking them questions, and listening to what they've said. 
And once you've got that information, then you can go back to, you know, teaching them what information they need, observing. All right. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, thank you very much for your word. Thank you for uh, the time that I got to preach. I just ask you to please bless the next uh, man who's coming up. In Jesus' name, amen.